Holy moly. 100 people dead from tornadoes. Holy cow. I gotta go right through there. That's fantastic. That is a whole lot of rain right there. And according to that, we're gonna try to shoot that little gap right there. Yep, good luck with that. Woo, doggy, hold on. Red light, yeah! Oh, holy, holy crap. Good lord. Crap, <laughs> my blood pressure is so high right now. very early in the morning. I'm getting ready to go on a trip all the way to Tucson, Arizona to pick up a little airplane I've never seen before. I've only seen three pictures of it from an email that I got and I need to fly it all the way back to Florida, which if you're driving by car is over 2,000 miles. I can't see how anything could possibly go wrong on that trip. I found the deal on Craigslist and then the guy said, nope, it's already been taken, somebody's already given me a deposit on it, and he's gonna be picking it up. And I said, well, that's a bummer, I missed out on a good deal. So if anything changes, then just put my name on your list of people to call back. And about a month later, guess what? Got an email, he said, hey, the deal fell through with the other guy, so if you want the plane, it's yours. I'm like, yeah, I'm in. So like any smart, sophisticated guy, I immediately mailed a thousand dollar check all the way across the country with no contract, never seeing the plane, not knowing the guy, nothing. There's only one thing left to say. All right, time to pack up for the trip. We're gonna need some basic tools. All right. You know, we might end up going to a classy place. Never know, I might have to walk a while if the plane dies. I need some gas money. There we go. Uh, it's supposed to be cold. I need my pajamas. We're gonna be close to the southern border, so we might, might need to run away. We're gonna need something to read on the trip in case I'm having a hard time falling asleep. I've never read it. Might be a better uh, lesson one. Don't buy an airplane. And there we go. We're good to go. Step one is to stand in line for like an hour. That's fun. And now time to violate your fourth amendment, right? Uh, by stripping down and having everything looked at. That's fun. Finally getting on the plane. It's only been two hours and 20 minutes since I got here. Woohoo! Craig Tuckerman, this first one's going out to you, my friend. Thank you for your support. Save the 310. Oscar, you the man, my friend. Man. One leg down, one to go. We're in seven and a half hours of traveling now, so one more plane flight to go. Here we go. Shout out to all you Salt Lake folks out there. If you're in Salt Lake, throw a comment, hit a like. And even though I'm wearing a mask and you can't see my mouth moving, the editor better not be dubbing something over this so that everybody doesn't know what I'm actually saying. That wouldn't be very cool. Mini bags, mini bags. Lots of bags, lots of bags. And there it is. Sweet. Better bag. Let's roll. I thought I was coming to Arizona where it's warm. Who knew it'd be cold in the desert at night? Man, it's like a sweater. That's better. Hey, look at that. Casino Del Sol Resort something or another. In my time, it's 2.30 in the morning. I gotta go meet this guy at eight o'clock tomorrow morning. My, I can't do math right now. My, it's all the. Let's just go find a bed. Let's see, check it out. See what? Ooh. Ooh. It's fancy. Ooh, oh, a bathrobe. <gasps> Slippers? Yes. Time to go to bed. I'm getting ready to walk out the door, go meet the guy, Byron. A little nervous because this is the first time I've ever seen the plane in person or even the whole thing uh, outside of those couple of pictures. But before we do that, we gotta get some coffee and get up and get going in the morning. And I don't know about you, but um, these little things here, 
And uh, I don't know how you like your coffee, but I like my coffee like my women. Sweet and creamy. Mmm, lots of cream. Lots of cream. Yep, lots of cream. Confession, I'm super excited right now. You know that video on, you know, Tic Tac or whatever that other thing is? And the, I'm just a happy, a happy dog. I'm just a happy, I'm really excited. I'm praying, please don't let this be a massive letdown. I get over there and find out it's just a bucket of bolts and things held together by like baling twine or something, which would probably be fine because, I mean, it's uh, it's experimental, which means, you know, good luck, buddy. I mean, that's probably how I would build it anyway, so I would understand it perfectly, but I'm really excited. Gotta go downstairs, meet him right now. <laughs> All right. Oh, there he is in the little Jeep. Sweet. Yeah. Morning. Must be James. Must be Byron. Hi there. Good to finally meet you. Yeah. Let me throw these here in the back and. All right. Oh man. This is the first time I'm ever seeing the airplane. Pretty excited. A little nervous. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, this is this is a really clean is. build. Is this is a good. really clean build though. Here you got the uh, tanning bed option. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's a lot bigger baggage compartment than I thought it was going to have. Now, one suggestion is when you fly this airplane and it's sunny out, wear a dark shirt. A dark shirt. A dark shirt. I'm going to give you that shirt. Why a dark shirt? Because the sun comes through there and reflects on the GPS and it makes it very hard to read. Uh, I never would have thought about that. So yes. wear a dark shirt. Dark shirt, which is ironic because you wouldn't think if it was a no, sunny day no, no. to wear a dark shirt. <laughs> so how long did it take you to build the kit? Because you built it oh. from Ikea boxes yeah, on, right? You're, you're right. I did. Uh, it took a little over four years of about 40 hours a week, roughly, 35 to 40 hours. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm a So two, yeah, 2,000 hours a year, roughly, four years, so that's about 8,000 hours. Mm -hmm. Woo! That's and it shows, that is, I've looked at a, a few of these, and that is, so far what I've seen, the cleanest, it has the, there's no weirdness on this so far. So far. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I know of, anyway. That's right. So, and I noticed the uh, the end numbers here. There was a bigger end number on it. Because I flew down to Mexico a couple times. And they have to have the small one. No, they have to have a big one. I put oh. A big one on. Oh, okay. Well, also, actually, this airplane's supposed to have the big numbers. Well, that's what I was saying. But nobody ever checks. Fantastic. Let's uh, now. While we're back here, though, let's uh, all stacked here is all get the jack. Yeah. All of this stuff your stuff you might want to some tape is this the cover i see bruce is there okay that's that definitely needs to go and some these books you do need. yep these you do need yeah these i don't think you need they're the construction manuals okay that i doubt if you'll want them these are the actual plans but oh my end. goodness i would love to have those just for the provenance to that's it's just there's something special about having the build plans and all that with and an airplane like this. This is a box of all, almost all of the receipts of pieces and parts and things that's gone on this airplane. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, wow. I don't know if we need any of them. So 175 bucks, $195 is what it costs with shipping to rebuild a part on an experimental. If this would have been a certified, just put a zero behind it. It would have cost a thousand dollars to have that little thing redone. Called TK5. Originally, it's called an Ong de Bonger. Ong de Bonger. Yes, an Ong de Bonger. That's a lot funner to say than a TK5. <laughs> well, his name is Chinese guy. His name is Tim Tim Ong. Okay. He worked for Lance Air. He didn't like the donuts any more than I did. I had an old Mooney, by the way, for the donuts. Oh yeah. So he designed these things, and they were called Ong de Bongers. I like. I would have kept the name Ong de Bonger just to say it. 
All right, so we got, this is the fresh air vents right here. Um, Are they on a little simply, cable just, flap in there? No, you just simply reach down with your finger and do this. Okay. There's, a little, there's just a little uh, tab on it. Okay. You have to reach down by your knee. Where did this engine, what did it come out of? And I see the, yeah, the cylinders I don't know where it came out of, but cylinders. it was Dick Waters down in Florida. Okay. Been there for years and years. This is the exact same bolt that we had to get for a, a Sierra that we're redoing that has the same servo on it. And that little stinking bolt right there, $180 because it's certified. I made it. Yeah, and there's only like three of them in the world. <laughs> I didn't know you could even buy them. No. I just came up with that idea, so I made made them. Yeah, and what I love, it's the same, it's these same kind right here. Here's that harmonic dampener I was talking about. Yeah. So this is because this is a composite prop. And it so weighs it, almost nothing. That's right. It only weighs, what'd you say? 16 pounds. 16 pounds, which is nothing. And these are timed together for the balancing of it? No, actually they aren't. There's a glycerin uh, in here and some sort of weight. I don't know what they are. Oh, okay. But they float in the, gl in the glycerin. So like witchcraft or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Scientific witchcraft. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> the engine, whenever it was put on here, was it a new or was it a... Overhauled. It was overhauled, taken out of like something else. Waters, and... I don't know where it was taken out. Okay. I have no idea. All right, that's fair. We got going fuel fuel pump here, oh, or the, no? That's the yeah, this yeah. That's the a fuel pump. pump. This is yeah, pump or fuel pump. Yeah. yeah, and then of course the mechanical pump. That's all. I Transducer down there. While we're here, here's where you uh, mm -hmm. sump it. Yep. But let me say right here, there is, there is. That's the only fuel drain you have on this airplane. Hanger mate, he never works out. It just sits there. Yeah. See, he's starting to get some, get a little bit of uh, hanger it's gonna, dust. It's going to grow some. I something. Yeah, I think so. This airplane, aside from going somewhere and sitting out overnight somewhere, has always been hangered. I've never had an ounce of water in the fuel. Okay. Hundred low lead. Hundred low. Okay. And is this got any high compression pistons or anything like that, or is it just kind of a standard? Just stock. Yeah. Okay. See this collar right here? Yep. That never used to be there. And if you take this off, you'll find that there's a roll pin, shear pin, that goes all the way through mm -hmm. this and ties this to that. Okay. That failed. Oh. And my, on a landing out here, like I said, thank goodness it was here at Ryan. And it, I got the damn shimmy you can imagine. That's right, you did tell me about yeah. that, yeah. It, it bad, bad. Yeah. It, it actually cracked and broke some of the, some of the, so I had to take That's the engine right. off, yep. get it all redone and put back on. And in response, Lance Air has this, this, and I put that on. Okay. And all that does is cover up that shear pin so it can't work its way out or do anything. And this composite is, uh, what material is it made out of? It's not carbon fiber, it's a, uh, a fiber, fiberglass. fiberglass type, yeah, okay. And uh, it's a wood core. It starts with a wood core and then builds up. And this one's the one that comes up and slides forward. Yeah. Okay. This it works quite well. It's not quite as convenient as some of the ones that are tilt forward, but it's, when it's down a lot, it's down a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you're not flying with the canopy open is no. what you're saying. There's it's your attitude indicator. Because the picture I got, I could only see from here over. So I kept trying to figure out, I was like, where the heck is this guy's attitude indicator? The switch is on there, it gives you true airspeed, gives you density altitude. Okay, yeah. It's old, but it works fine. It's a little hard to read, but okay. not too bad. I manage to fly with it all the time. Is this vacuum or electric? That is electric. Okay. There's no vacuum. I don't. Is there no, a vacuum pump on this? No. <gasps> I love you even more. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh my gosh. I love being loved. Yeah, sure enough. Yes, hallelujah. I hate those things. Yeah, I do too, that's why they're not on there. Well, thankfully, you don't have some weird, no, you know, secret hidden switch, anti-theft switch on it, do you? That Aztec I was telling you about, there's no key in the Aztec, it just has switches. And so they hid a switch under the left or the right side up in the dash area. It took me two days to find that switch before I, I could figure that out. Oh. Look down here, and you'll see a lever right there. Um, oh, right here? Yes. Yep, okay. That lever is the uh, is for the hydraulic pump. When it's 
forward like that, it's bypassing. The pump will run, but it's not pumping anything. Okay. It's just neutral. Right now, if you took out this and this, you would see that there's no pressure and the, the gauges are here. Okay. You can see there's no pressure. And all the hydraulic pump and reservoirs hydraulic behind here? right here. Yeah. And the battery's right there. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's do that let's, while we're talking. And I see, oh, you got the headsets plugged in back here. Yes, they do. I like them back there so you're not messing around with the cords all the time. This whole thing comes out, leaves that sitting there. Yep. However, that is removable once you get this out. Okay. The solenoids are right in back of there. And of course, all the battery wires and such. You're a little bit longer legged than I am. I used to be about five eleven and a half. I'm shrunk. <laughs> I've noticed the same thing. I used to be six foot, now I'm five eleven and a half. <laughs> you wait till you're my age, fella. I'm 85 now. Are you really? Yeah. yeah. Wow, well done. Well, Holy cow, you're I, getting, I hope to get around, I hate, shoot half I hate doing this. My wife said last night we were at dinner, are you sure you really want to sell this airplane? I've been flying for 52 years. Wow. So it's going to be a big change, a huge change. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I, oh, I, I hope to take care of it, put lots of hours on it. My son, who he goes with me a lot of times, he almost came with me on this trip, but I knew I'd be taking back quite a few different things. And with it being the first time I've flown this plane, I wanted to take the risk down of if something decision. were to happen, you know, worst case scenario. It's probably I, a good thing. Yeah, my wife did make sure the life insurance policy was paid up, so. First things first. First, that's right. She said, now before you leave, you did get that payment out, right? <laughs> okay, my wife's fun. <laughs> I've also been married for a hundred years too. Oh, there you go. At least. Yeah. <laughs> Stall speed on this thing is around 57 knots indicated. Yeah, which is a lot slower than I thought it would be. They've published like 62 or something. That's like right. That, or 63 or 4 or something. No, it's, I've done it any number of times. If you stall this, don't go into a full stall. Yeah. Go into a stall. Make damn sure that ball is centered. That's right. right. You don't want to keep it centered. Yeah. You'll be fine. All right. Well, yeah, let's uh, we can go ahead and put the cowl on, take it up around the pattern, uh, take it out a little bit. You can slow me, show me the flight characteristics, things like that. And then assuming we both make it back in one piece, we'll go to the bank and get you some money. Does that sound good? Sounds good. All right. And in pure Jimmy fashion, I forgot my stinking plug thingy in there for the audio to hook the headsets up to that. On this first test flight here with uh, Byron, we're, we're not gonna have audio, but that's okay, because I'm gonna concentrate on not killing myself and learning so I don't have to deal with you watching my every mistake and learning. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to you later. All right, hold tight. Now is the time to figure out how you get out of this Getting thing. Of yeah, here, let's see. Stabilize up here, but remember, you can't pull off. So you come here, two feet out on the wing. Okay. There you go. Oh, like that. Nailed it. We were just putzing around without even trying. This thing hit 200 knots. Dang it! Now that's ground speed. I'll give a little premise there. It was 165 knot indicated with 180 knot, 185 knot true airspeed. And we weren't even trying. We were just well, mucking around for nine, a couple of minutes. You get it up to nine five or 10 and it does better. Yeah, we were only at 6,500 feet, right? So yeah, yeah, and that was eight gallons an hour. How awesome is this? The deed is done. Now I gotta go get this guy some money. I'm so excited, I gotta go pee. Ooh, look at that. You think it'll start? I wonder how many BTUs this has got. Dude, this is like a jet fighter bonanza. I think it's French. Hey, if you know what this airplane is, put it in the comment description below and let me know if you've ever flown one and how many BTUs are in this thing. How cool is that? Oh, wow. That is cool. All the blueprints for all the parts. Oh, look at this. 
This is every step of the way. Dude, check that out. 8,000 hours. Fantastic. Dude, they got a pool on this side. We're gonna check that out. It's Arizona, so it couldn't be that cold. Oh yeah, this is happening. Fun story is Sky King, the TV show, was based in Arizona, and this is called a Sky King hotel room because it's king bed, and they call it the Sky Level. Sky King hotel room. I had to do it. I didn't have any other choice. It said Sky King. I'm doing it. We're going to be flying over to mountains and heading east. Whoo, to celebrate, we're doing the American by J.C. Newman. This is the El Presidente, the good one. Remember kids, smoking is bad for you, but this is pretty stinking good. I am pretty concerned about the weather. We've got this nastiness there, and I'm starting right down here, and then I've gotta go through here, which is not too bad there. Gotta go through all this stuff here as well, to the pressure here, pushing me that way, and then I gotta, you know, play cops and robbers and dodge all these thunderstorms or whatever is going to be happening in here. I don't even know what that looks like yet. And try to make it to there. So, yeah. Good times. Whew. Today is the big day. It's early in the morning and we're going to open the hangar up. I got to load up my bags, load up there, get some fuel and get moving. I did call the, uh, the weather people uh, and it's not good. So they, they said that there's quite a bit of turbulence between here and Texas where I've got to go through. And then once I get out of the turbulence, then it starts with some major IFR low conditions down to like 200 feet. And this airplane is not IFR certified. That's awesome. Fun fact, biggest killer of pilots in small airplanes is going from what's called visual flight uh, conditions, which is this where you can see, to instrument flight conditions, which is how much you can only see like that much of anything and just the instruments. And that's kind of what we're headed into. So yeah, I'm, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be, it's gonna be just fine. Super excited. This is the moment I've been waiting for. I'm gonna go ahead and finally put our bags in there and get going. Sweet. All right, here we go. Oh. Ooh, that's a tight fit. Well, shoot. I think this bag might be too big for this thing. Oh man. All right, we, we'll just edit this part out. All right, well, I met this fella. He said he uh, flew around a lot last night and didn't need this anymore, so he gave it to me. Now I got all my stuff in here. That was a lot better. That was a nice guy. What was, he said his name was Nick or something like that. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate it. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing Closed up here. Checklist went through that. One, two, three. Can I get a clear prop? All right, we got. Good morning, Ryan. Ground assistance seven hundred two. Temperature, oil temperature is up. Cylinder temperatures are up. Code to do VOR approach over to. We are fully warmed up here. Ryan Tower eight two six one Echo holding shore three three ready for departure. Ryan Tower eight two six one Echo Ryan Tower runway six right. Taxi via right turn on runway three three. At runway six right, clear for takeoff. Wind zero nine or zero at eight. 
Six right, clear for takeoff. You three three. Thank you. All right, boys. Here we go. Full power. Ooh. Ooh. Holy crap! This thing is touching. Gears are up and locked. Holy crap! All right. Left coming up. Center six one echo. Turn right, heading one four zero. One four zero. It's just six one echo. Bad boys up so I don't smash my head on that thing. It's real out of hand. Oh, hold on, boys. Here we go. Right to lightning. Ooh. Holy crap, balls. I doubt you can see this on the camera, but I'm being thrown about pretty good. I feel like a small craft advisory on a boat. Looking for three to six foot waves. Golly. 183 true airspeed, 184 true airspeed. Center, the service altimeter is missing, oh, altimeter is 3005. Uh, okay. Yeah. 154 knots true airspeed, but I'm doing 193 knots ground speed. We got a pretty good tailwind going. That's amazing. American 313, contact Albuquerque Center, 135.15. There we go, we got some smooth air back again. Holy cow, that was... Mexico? That happened really fast. I've never crashed across the state that fast in a little airplane. Wow. That's awesome. Hello, El Paso. That is Juarez, Mexico. Wow, that is... That's a lot of little houses and people right there. Holy cow. Right now I'm flying IFR. There's a road right there. And uh, I fly roads. Oh man, I gotta pee so bad. We still got almost an hour to go. Oh. Ooh. Focus, focus, Stop focus. One focus. Whose idea was it to have coffee right before you get on a plane? You get out. Oh man. Oh, I can do this. 20 minutes to go. All right, I can finally just start my descent, and I'm 47 nautical miles out, which is awesome. Started descent from that far out, and I've got to drop 7,000 feet. Oh man, I got a piece of that. One thing about out here, they got a lot of uh, wind farms. Holy mother of pearl. All right, eight minutes, 45 seconds. I can do this. Whew. This is the worst way in the world to have my first by myself landing in this airplane is with the pressure of the bladder. Yeah, we're probably gonna land really fast and I don't even care. I just need to find some place to pee. Man, when you get this close to the ground, 2,500 feet off of the ground, 200 knots looks all really fast. Oh, cause it's really fast. Oh wow, it's got warm. Maybe because I just peed my pants. I uh, believe that was for 6-3 uniform, Charlie. All right, I think that's one six three four nine seven. Uh, straight in front of me. All right, there's pattern altitude. Low bumping. You're on final ninety five stabilized. I like it. Drop this baby from. 10 feet up, not a problem. All right, turn the baby around. Well, that definitely scared me out of me. Holy crap. Have to check that one. Duel over there. Oh, I'm gonna be so bad. Oh my gosh. Ay, 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 ay. All right, all this stuff's coming off. Oh, man. I'm still a little like this from the landing and because I had to pee so bad. But how hard do you think it is to get gas in a place? Got a little credit card machine? You got an airplane? Should be pretty easy, huh? Watch this. All right, step one, put your card in. Right here. Pull it out. Okay, gallons. 
30, enter, confirm. Please rate. Okay, handled. Turn pump handle and begin fueling. Pump handle. Okay. You gotta come over and start fueling. Oh, are you kidding? That time it worked just fine. First time I came over here, it just turned off on me and spit out the receipt over there. Well, that's not near as good a video. Well, let's check out where we landed in the middle of nowhere, Texas. Yep, looks like the middle of nowhere, Texas. Uh, yep, not a whole lot happening here except for uh, tumbleweeds. All right, let's look at the damage. Got a bend of gear, crack, break something back here. That all still looks okay. The doors are still on. That thing came off right there, so that's a bummer. Hit the tail or anything, did I? No. What about this side? Huh? Everything still seems to be holding up. That's why they call it the Outback Gear. Because, you know, people like to land hard like they're in the Outback or something. One of the great things about flying these little airports is checking out the little FBOs. Let's check this thing out. Ooh, all right. Air conditioner, fridge, couch to sleep on, hopefully not. Computer, bathroom. It's got all the luxuries you could ever imagine. So I just flew from Tucson big lake that and that far across the country in two hours 220 or something like that I was averaging like 225 knots or something like that ground speed sweet my butt hurts tailbone sitting in that thing nice yummy lunch of a bar and more water but not a lot more water just to sip i want to be a little dehydrated if i'm honest with you being up there so i don't got a piece of bed i'm going to land at the next stop <sighs> two hours and i'm making my first repair gotta fix the light that i broke yep that's normal okay got it in there had to put those in there because every time i'd push on it the whole thing would just go and go down in there uh okay Like anybody's here. Oh, what? Look at this place I found. Oh, it's right at the airport. I flew in and just walked in the door. How stinking cool is this? Look at that. Wonder how many BTUs that's got. Oh, I wonder if it'll start. How cool is this? A shooting star. Ooh, it's got foldy wings. Dude, it's got guns in the back. Oh, I want one. Dude, it's got guns in the front. Oh, I want one. Dude, you can pretend to be hang gliding. Or a fighter pilot, which I do every day of my life. Not gonna lie, this is way stimulation overload. Shut the front door. There's another hanger. I spy something with jets over there. Um, yes, please. Thank you very much. And look, little foldy wings. Oh, yeah. That's the business end right there. Yes. That's your getter going her. And the infamous P-51 Mustang. Shooting down some, some Nazis. This looks like something out of Star Wars. 
clear prop. Christmas shopping done. Nailed it. Bought out the gift shop. It's awesome. So I am at Ellington Airport. This has got some crazy history for flight and for training for World War II and even space stuff now. Check this out. They got a deal where they're gonna be landing spaceships and stuff here. Crazy. Well, crap. You see that? And then you see that. That's not equipped to go into that stuff like that. And right here above us, it's okay. But I gotta go that way. That's no bueno. So now I gotta see if I can go find some place to park because now I'm stuck here tonight. Sweet. So that is the one thing with general aviation. If you have time to spare, go by air. Blah. Even today, I'm looking at the possibility of 25 to 40 mile an hour winds. And this little tiny airplane only weighs 1,100 pounds. So a little bit of wind makes a big difference. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get out of here today or if the wind and the clouds and the visibility doesn't cooperate. Well, I was able to find some place for the airplane to park. Now I gotta go find some place for me to park. So, grab my stuff and see, find, sleep under a bridge or something. I hear they're pretty good around here. Pilot's lounge, mm. check this out. Sleep rooms available. Just saved myself a hundred bucks in a hotel. Holla, my lazy boy. And I'm out. See you guys in the morning. I just woke up on, I don't even know what day this is. Day two of this, it's a Friday. And like there was a polar vortex that happened and I might be stuck here, not just today, not even tomorrow, but I might be three days here in Houston. Kind of a worst case scenario. Although I'm in Houston. So it's not a bad place to be stuck. They got a pretty cool space center here. That'd be pretty sweet to check out. View from the hotel here, and those clouds, they look like they're moving really fast. Let's see if I can hold still. Cause yeah, they're at about, I don't know, 100, 200 feet or 500 feet or something. Oh, humbug. I've been looking at the weather and all that stuff and I have a small window about this big of maybe two hours, an hour to two hours to be able to get out of Houston because there's a section between Texas and Louisiana right there that as soon as I can make it through that, then I think I'll be able to skirt around and go on down to Florida. Unfortunately, I'm gonna, I can't go up in the high elevation like I was, so I'm gonna have to be running at like 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 feet and scud running, which means going really super close to the ground. And honestly, there's antennas that are taller than that. So I'm gonna make sure I don't run into an antenna or some other thing. So thankfully this part of the country is really flat and it's all pretty much sea level. So I don't have to worry about mountains and stuff like that. But yeah, this this is a little bit sketchy. I just wanna make sure that I'm gonna be safe and not you know, get myself stuck into that situation, the number one killer of all GA pilots, which is going from where you can see everything to where you can't see everything and you end up crashing somewhere. And I don't want to be on some of the other YouTube channels out there, okay? So, hmm. All right, here's our map of where I gotta go. Let's see, uh, I'm not gonna be dealing with any high turbulence. I'm not gonna be up that high. What about low turbulence? Okay, I stay clear of that. What about ice? Uh, okay, looks like it's north of me. Stay clear of that, okay, that's good. Thunderstorms in yellow here. Uh, it'll be close, but I should be under that area, so that's okay. And then what about IFR, which is cloud coverage visibility? Oh, that's not good. Hmm, it is decision time. This is gonna be the only window I have Eh, no pun intended, for like the next two to three days. If I don't make this window outside, you can see all the clouds. There's a couple of breaks in there. And that right there, they're telling me is only at 1300 feet up, uh, which is not good. That means if I don't leave now, I don't leave for three days. Hey, babe. Oh, hey, babe. Well, this is the window 
time frame, and it is it is questionable at best. Don't do it if it's not safe. I know, I know. It's what's well, a bummer. And whenever I got my uh, pilot's license, if I if this plane was instrument rated, I would have already been off the ground and probably been halfway, almost most of the way home by now because it's just a thin cloud layer that because this airplane doesn't have the legal paperwork on it, I can't climb above it, even though I've got all the equipment to do it. So I've got to stay below this cloud layer, and the cloud layer is pretty close to the ground. Unless something changes in the next couple of hours, then I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to call it and stay here. And then I'll probably be stuck here for a couple of days till the storm passes because it's looking like it's just going to get a lot worse. You don't know how long that's going to last? Uh, not exactly because I got to wait. I have to wait for that storm to, to pass. So just because they don't have the paper signed, like the airplane is able to fly up, but you're not allowed to? That's correct. What happens if you do it anyway? Uh, the FAA finds out that I did it and they pull my pilot's license. No, that is not a home All right, babe. Well, I'll, uh, I'll keep you posted. I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to be able to get out of here today. Uh, all right. Yeah, Noah. What's up, buddy? Well, I'm trying to, bud. I'm trying to, but the, the weather is not good. And so it's, uh, I just have to wait. Yeah. All right. All right, buddy. I love you, and I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, love you, babe. All right, love you. All right. She is not happy. Can't blame her. I'm not too happy myself. I have made the decision. I'm staying here for tonight because those are just not cooperating. While I'm here, the space station is real close. So uh, come on, let's go check that thing out. So bam, the space center of Houston. Oh, look at that thing. It's got a space shuttle on top. Look at that. That's piggyback. Holy Moses, that thing is ginormous. Oh, it has like a... Uh, how many flights and stuff is that? Dude, let's go inside and check this thing out. <gasps> oh, wow. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. That's cool. That's a lot of aluminum foil on that thing. Hey, that's funny. It's like space balls. And when you're in Texas, you gotta have some barbecue. Bam. That's what they're eating for lunch? Huh. I had barbecue. Wow. 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 This is the Apollo 17, the last Apollo mission there was. This is the command module. Jiminy Christmas. That thing is gigantic. Yeah, so I'm like going to space shuttle. Curse you, low clouds. How much would you love to just push all these buttons? It doesn't look much different than a, a newer airliner. That's insane how big the wheels are, these struts. It goes up in there. Wonder how many BTUs that's got. Wonder how many BTUs that's got under the hood. All of them. You think we can get it to start? All right, let's do this. Let's be, uh, let's launch. Ready for All right, off. fire one. Launch. Eight, seven, seven, Ready. One. Press launch. Go. Fire one. Lift off. We have lift off. Yes. Mission failed. What? This reminds me a lot of how this trip is going, actually. 
starts off kind of good and exciting and then I get stuck somewhere and mission failed. What kid would not like a freeze-dried ice cream sandwich and astronaut ice cream? Bam! Christmas shopping done! Oh, golly, this is such, this is like the best weather that I've ever not flown in. That's ridiculous. Now what am I gonna do? Well, since I've got some time on my hands, I thought I'd dive into these books and I have found some very interesting things. The first thing I'd like to start with is the engine. Now the engine is a O360 and that O, sometimes there's an I O, the I means injected. This was a carbureted 360, yet it is a fuel injected engine that's on there now. Okay, uh, and nowhere in the build paperwork does it show where they added the fuel injection stuff. This book right here is just unbelievable. It is every single day that Byron spent building the airplane. Page one, ordered the standard kit in August 1995, received delivery of the kit on February 27th, 1996 and then it goes on and it talks about how he had spent seven and a half hours just removing the glue that they had from packing it to getting it in there and i'm i am beside myself i feel as though i've come across a, a diary which basically is what it is this is my favorite entry by far it's from the second test flight on December 16th, let's note. Fixed the cowl vent door and installed three strings across the door and one string each at the two heat dissipator doors above the cylinders. Second flight went okay, except very poor reception from Ryan Tower. Returned after about 1.8 hours and found that front gear did not indicate down and locked. Used the emergency extension valve and received a down and locked light. Landed and cursed. <laughs> it really is like a diary. I, I really am, I'm reading through this and I can see some themes, some issues that he struggled with during its, uh, you know, after you build a project, you're always running into these little things and the process and what he did i'm able to follow every single step he he wrote every tiny thing that he did to this and what he tried what worked what didn't work i am astonished i truly believe i found the gem of the gem of these lance air home built airplanes byron well done, oh my goodness. Oh, turn up. Okay, maybe I'll fly home today. Oh. All right, let me, let me see what I can do. All right, I love you, bye. Well, it turns out my wife has a super bad toothache that's swelled up and she's taken pain meds and none of it's working. It's Saturday, go figure. Uh, it's 7.09 in the morning. I'm here stuck in Texas. She's there with the three kids with a crazy toothache. She ate something or drank something yesterday that just sent it way over the edge. So now I'm trying to shuffle and help her find a dentist so she can go get that taken care of. And I'm stuck here and I haven't even looked at the weather. I don't even know. Let's see what the weather is. Whoa. It's a little bit weaker as far as the wind energy is concerned. That is nasty weather. Whoa. So we, we've been talking to a few of the first responders throughout the morning and they're urging people to- Holy moly. 100 people dead from tornadoes yesterday and last night? Holy cr moly. Whoa! 
I guess it's a really good thing I didn't try blazing off into that stuff yesterday. <gasps> Holy cow. That's, that's going to be sketchy. Talk about riding the lightning. Woo! Bungalow up, boys. I got to go right through there. That's fantastic. Uh, looks about the same as yesterday. Although the clouds are not moving near as fast. They look a little bit higher, which is good. And there's a little glimmer of hope right there. That's good. Let's check out the, uh, the maps. Oh, bleh. Yellow is the thunderstorms right there. And turbulence way up north. Okay. And icing way up north. That's not affecting us. So uh, IFR and thunderstorms. And there's that band right there. That was a pretty nasty front that moved through. Look at that. All right, let's see what it says till nine o'clock, which a couple hours. Okay, so that's, it says here under weather. Currently they're few at 3,300 broken at five. That is acceptable. I will like that. 320 at five, oh heck yeah. We can do this. And then nine, VFR broken at four, we can do this. All right, okay, looks like we can take off. What's gonna be on the way there? So three minutes ago, few at 800, broken at 47, and missed, okay. I don't like missed, because it's low level stuff. But broken at 47, that's good. All these clouds are a lot higher than they were yesterday. So this is looking better and better. VFR, few at 800, scattered at 10, I can handle that. Scattered at 2,000, broken at 25 at 2 o'clock. Okay, that's, that's pushing it. 4 o'clock, scattered at 1,000, broken at 45, so it goes up. So it looks like the bottom clouds are going to build to this layer here by this afternoon. Okay, we'll have to keep an eye on that. My areas of concern are really from about here over to here. That section right there is going to be the question. It's looking promising until we get to the Florida Alabama line right in there. That little section looks like it could be kind of sketchy right there. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do with that yet. However, it does look like we'll be able to go ahead and take off this morning. Going to go ahead and get ready for the day, get breakfast pack up my Santa bag and head to the airplane, see if we can't find our window to get out of here. I love you, Houston, but I'm ready to go home. Okay, it is now 8.30. That is looking very good. You see how it's kind of moving that way? Whew, moving that way, that's, that's the direction we're heading. And I just checked the weather here locally, and it is 5,000 feet ceilings, so that is fantastic. We do have that stretch that I'm going to have to go through. We're going to have to keep an eye on. Uh, hopefully that'll continue to move that way and it'll take me, you know, an hour to pack up here, get over to the airplane, get it ready and going. By that time, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that that weather would have moved up a little bit more and out a little further and those clouds get up so I can fly right under them. Let's give this thing a shot. Well, I've got a huge special, special treat. I did not know this was happening. I met an awesome friend, Ethan. He was in my EO Colorado chapter, just happened to be walking through, totally serendipitous. And he introduced me to the, the one and only, the famous Miss Teresa Claiborne. Teresa, it is such a pleasure and an honor. It is. She's gonna share with you her story. Listen up, you're not gonna wanna miss it. You know, I'm gonna give him a little grace. I'm actually Captain Teresa Claiborne. I'm in my United Airlines uniform. I'm a 787 captain in Newark. Before that, my start was in the United States Air Force. And I was actually the first black woman pilot in the Air Force. In the Air Force, yeah, in the Air Force, I flew a KC-135, you know, after pilot training and did that for seven years on active duty. Then I went to the reserves, joined United, and went through a series of airplanes, and now here I am. So we are in Houston, doing Girls Rock Wings. I actually happen to be the president 
of an organization called Sisters of the Skies. And basically, through mentorship, scholarship, and outreach, we're trying to get little black girls to look like me on the flight deck. That's what it's all about. Fantastic, thank you so much. So what website or how can more people find out about this organization? Okay, it's real simple, sistersoftheskies.org. And it tells our story, you know, how we all met. And it was just one person seeing someone else on social media. Social media, it's a great thing. So one person seeing another person, they talked about it. And the next thing you knew, it's like, well, how many black women do you know? How many black women do you know? And here we are. We're about 150 strong now and we're just trying to grow our numbers. We've got a large mentorship program. So there's about a hundred of them waiting in the wings. We're trying to get them prepared so they can take over. I got two and a half years before I retire. Wellzers. Oh my goodness. The honor is mine. It's been such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. But look, we got a couple of little, little airplanes parked out here. We're gonna go check out. Oh, that is an awesome trip. Nothing is classified. Nothing is classified. Who do we got? Hello. What airplane is this? This is the Texan 2 T6. Uh, Hold on. I gotta zoom out. Texan 2. Yes. We got four whirler birds and some money to noise converter. <laughs> hey, how many BTUs you got under the hood? Well, we have 1100 horsepower. So nice. <laughs> super good. Yeah. <laughs> She's uh, up to 7G capable and 316 knots, which is about 360. How long you been in? I have been in the Air Force uh, almost five years. So same amount of time I've been flying this plane. So. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your service. Thank you for sharing a little bit with us. Thank you. Yes, thanks for your support. Can you just say, save the 310? Save the 310. Save the 310. <laughs> Who do we got here? I am Lieutenant Meg Guerrero from Laughlin Air Force Base, uh, currently in the T-38 C model. Cool. Pretty cool, it goes pretty fast, goes supersonic, and uh, it's a lot what? of fun. <laughs> Shut the front door, no it doesn't. <laughs> it does. What? Mm -hmm. What's the top out at? The top out at, well, it can go about 1.8, but I've never, I've seen people top what? out at like 1.5. That's insanity! Yeah. All right, how many BTUs you got under the hood? <laughs> about uh, 12, was it, 12,800 pounds of thrust. Dang on, that's cooking. Yeah. Is this one engine or two? Two. This has got two. Yes. Which button pushes the rockets? Oh, we are. We have the HOTAS, so we have a couple of stuff. We have the pickle button. What is a pickle button? Pickle button. This kind of looks like a pickle. Oh, okay. Yeah, drop, drop the bombs. We got air to ground, air to air, simulated, but um, it kind of pre preps the students for their future follow-on aircraft as far as weapons are concerned. Yes, that's fantastic. Ooh, we got a couple of G5s of 530. Okay, <laughs> that's fantastic. Only the top of the The line. steering wheel right here. This all <laughs> looks good. Okay. Wheels up, flaps. Got your, uh, your what is it? The, the old uh, Blackberry. Oh, oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Or the Nokia. Could the be Nokia. Yeah, Nokia, yes. Yeah. All right, so who are you? What's your story? How did you end up in this? Well, I walked, I walked into the wrong bar in West Texas now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And uh, no, I chose to go to the Air Force Academy last minute and it worked out for the best because I ended up in pilot training out of there. And uh, yeah, taught T1s for a little bit, this beautiful bird right here, and then C-17s, and now I'm back teaching again. Point us out, show us what some of the wizardry is happening in here. <laughs> well, you got two engines, so you got two stacks, and it's beautiful, and she's a beautiful bird, and she flies super fast. But, How fast? Uh, Fastest we can go is about 330 knots or 0.78 Mach. And is um, that cruise? That's at cruise. We normally cruise around at 250, uh, but that's for the student training mostly. How many BTUs you got under the hood? <laughs> Enough. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> In the civilian world, what is this called? Uh, the B-400. I think you can find one of these for like 250 grand. I, I think I did find one. Really? Yeah, I did a whole like series of super cheap private jets. Really? And this, yeah. the Beach 400 was on there. We're bam, save oh, the 310. Nice. Save the 310, save the Jayhawk. That's fantastic. Save the Jayhawk. What? Save the Jayhawk, no, 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 what? Oh, save the Jayhawk. No. Okay, fine, save the, save the Jayhawk. <laughs> Holy cow, it's windy. This is Lieutenant Thompson and Lieutenant Wing. Tell us a little bit about the airport. All right, uh, yeah, so this is our uh, mission crew. They uh, basically, like you said, are the meat of our uh, 
operations that we do. So reading different like sensors, radars, and uh, droppings and like buoys, uh, so that we can find submarines and do some really cool stuff. <laughs> Let's go see what we got. Uh oh, we got more people. And you're, wait, you're flying the what? F-18. The F-18? And he thinks this is the coolest plane he's ever seen. <laughs> Why? Well, it is. It's pretty, pretty hey, awesome. That is a true statement. That is factual. Yeah, they got a bathroom? There's red switches here. Can we push these? Certainly not. Red switches don't, don't push. Oh. Color-coded for safety. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, I wonder how many BTUs that's got. All of them. So Signature came through in a pinch with the weather that moved in. They snuck the plane in the hangar for two days. Gave me some uh, petrol to get moving again. Got a super nice FBO here. And now I get to go back there and just confirm some weather so I can boogie on out of here. Signature, thank you. You guys are awesome. Really appreciate your help on this trip. Doing my final prep before I get in the airplane. And there is that line of storms right here that goes right through there, which we know about that. And there's a lot of red and small numbers right here, which is not good. That means the ceiling is really, really low. Let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah, that's some nasty weather up there. It, thick clouds right here, but it, I, you know, I'm pretty sure I can sneak under them. And then if I come over here, I might have to stay just off the coast and stay just a smidge over the water or go north. And then once I get over here to Florida, why it's the Sunshine State. All right, good morning. There you are after a couple of days. Let's go ahead and do a pre-flight, get in this thing and get boogie. Holy moly, it's cold out there. Got a check done. We got enough gas in this thing just in case we have to not stop at the, uh, the stop that we have planned. Okay. Whew. Here we go. Master is on, and here we go. Can I get a clear prop? Oh. Whoo, she called clear prop. Go ahead and start moving out here a little bit. Ellington ground, this is uh, six two, uh, 8261 Echo at the FBO looking for a departure eastbound. All right, we're moving. Woo! Nicely done, holy mother of pearl. One, three, four, four, five, golly, go on. All right, we're in the air. We're doing a thing. Ooh. Awesome. Was that not a cool little side thing with all those ladies and the, the airplanes and the, the, the pilots and all that thing? That November 3261 Echo, you're leaving the class of our airspace to the east. VFR 628, uh, whoever I am, 61 Echo. <laughs> Have a great one, guys. Merry Christmas. Take care. There we are. We're now to the great unknown. Okay. Trim down bubble. Three degrees down bubble. Not too bad. Looking at the water below, and that is pretty choppy. I don't know if you can see it on here, but there's quite a bit of white uh, white caps on the water down there, which tells us we've got, got quite a bit of wind happening. And I can tell it's blowing me, blowing me pretty good. I'm crabbing a little bit, a little crabby. And this is a uh, air mitt for thunderstorm for convective activity, so that's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Bumpy, bumpy. On a plus side, our ground speed's 187 knots, and our true air speed's 190 knots. That's pretty cool. That is pretty awesome. At 7.5 gallons an hour. Yeah. Yes. According to the fish finder and the... Uh, the weatherman, because they're never wrong. 
Uh, I get through this little stretch here, and then I should be on the other side of that front that came through, and there was a massive tornadoes, massive destruction everywhere. It was a really, really bad front that came through. Uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty severe. And so now I'm getting ready to go through that. So I, I don't see how anything could possibly go wrong. Emergency procedures, if I do have an engine out and I've got to land it, uh, the beach is really soft sand, this thing does not do well. So the book says to make sure to keep the gears up, keep the bottom flat, and land in the water. So if I, uh, this all goes south, I'm gonna be landing in that water right there. We're gonna be a little skipping stone across the across the top of the water. That's that's gonna not not be fun. I don't want to do that. Ooh, I got pushed down to 2,000 feet now. All right, I'm getting into the to the questionable spot that I was looking at on the on the radar. 175 knots, that is just fantastic. And we are coming up onto that massive front, the tail, I'm hoping to bob and weave my way through it. I can see some sunlight spots, or lighter colored spots, coming through over there. See if I can show you. So, we're gonna try to stay away from all that yucky stuff up there. And keep it down here. Today's the beach day. All right, seeing more openings in the clouds. That's really good. And I'm up to 2,000 feet now. Although it is really, really super bumpy right here. Those clouds are not showing up on my radar here. And uh, they look kind of substantial. And I thought I was out of it. And I'm just getting ready to get the best of it here. I was up to 2,000 feet, now I gotta come back down. Holy crap, that's a lot of rain. That is an insane amount of rain. We're gonna go this way, run away! Oh yeah, that's a whole bunch of rain. So you see over there, that is a whole lot of rain right there. We can go to the south. And there's some back there. It's a little less up here. And according to that, we're gonna try to shoot that little gap right there. Yep, good luck with that. So this is my gap that I'm gonna shoot right there. That's an insane amount of rain coming down. And my goal is to go right through there. I'm gonna avoid that. And we're going right in the middle. Hey, uh, yeah, there's some breaking up here. Breaking up is hard to do. Do 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 do. Oh, look, a rainbow. <gasps> That's cool. That is the promise. Right there, boys. I mean, I don't like rain like it would be every day. <gasps> Whoa, look at that line. That is a very distinct front line. Holy cow, look at it. Goes from there all the way that way. And on the other side of that, could be nice open clouds. Oh yeah, we got lots of, oh, that was a good one. We got lots of rain right there, pocket terrain and all that. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Did I mention that there were uh, thunder, oh, thunderstorm warnings over here? Holy mighty. Woo, doggy, hold on. Red lightning, yeah! Woo! Woo, holy, holy crap. Woo, keep it level. Straight and level, baby. Straight and level. Woo! Nike sakes alive, that was not pleasant at all. Oh, there's a lot more birds. Whoa! 
There's some golly gomer updrafts happening here. Come up, good lord. Holy crap. Okay, gentle as it goes. Wow. So we got another strong line right there that I've got to figure out how to get through. doesn't show any clouds at all. You know what? That's clear over there. We're going that way. Holy perfect Nugent. And that's why you bring the speed back for maneuvering speed so big old bumps and slams or like that won't break the wing off. Can you see those clouds behind me? How towering those are? That is not a good day. I am just south of the uh, New Orleans Bravo airspace. So there's another pretty strong there. You know what? This has opened up quite a bit. I am going to go ahead and climb up on. That way we can zigzag around clouds. We're up to 2,700, 3,200. Oh yeah, air up here is a lot smoother too. Oh crap. That's the kind of cloud. See that thing right there? You want to stay away from that. You see all those over there? You want to stay away from that. See all that stuff right there? You want to stay away from that. But see, still VFR for now. Yep, all right. So we're coming over to the top of one of these clouds, so we're going to fill a little something here. We're now doing 200 knots again. And the next challenge is that big old dragon right there. So we're going to have to fly up between, and that gets really bad right there. Go all the way up around here, and hopefully we'll be able to go in between there. So I know you can't tell in the camera, but every time I fly, under just this little tiny bit of a cloud, the whole airplane kind of does this number right here. Gee, can you tell where the front is? Look at that. That's like a line, a big ball of clouds. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty clear where this front is, isn't it? A huge, I'm in between two gigantic weather spots. Big old crazy towering right there. And then on this side, it's dark, and I'm under these clouds here. And that right there. And, uh... That's some really not good stuff right there. It is the reason I don't climb and get above these clouds, which I could, but they're at 12,500 or so. So I would want to be, you know, 1,000 feet above those 13,500, and I do not have oxygen. So uh, can't climb up that high. I got to stay right here on this side of that line and on that side of that line and below those clouds. That is the true sense of being boxed in. Look at that. That is like a perfect box. All right, time to make my turn. So I was headed that way. And if you look, I'm shooting for this gap right there. So I'm headed over this way. And I'm, I'm afraid it might get bumpy again because I have to be underneath of this stuff. And it's raining like crazy. Yay. Crap, <laughs> my blood pressure is so high right now. Uh, oh man, woo wee. I bet when we get on the other side of this, we'll look back and that sucker will be going all the way to space. Oh yeah, look. Look, that's just one solid mountain of cloud. Well, I sure am glad that I picked a heck of a time to do a massive cross country where the weather was going to be perfect. Smooth ride. This was going to be a boring video. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hands are sweating. <laughs> I'm sweating. Oh. Heck on. Man, even up this high, uh, you know, 8,000 feet, this thing will still climb out another 800 feet a minute. Wowzers. Okay. So now, that was going to be my stop, but I'll be honest with you, 
All that is right here next to it. Even though my stop is right there, I ain't stopping at that first stop. That's why I don't put extra gas in here. So we can just keep on keeping on, you know what I'm saying? So this is why you want to get your IFR certification. Because if this plane was IFR, I'm IFR, then I could have just been going over all this stuff and I wouldn't have had to deal with all that stuff yesterday. I could have just went right over it. Those clouds hadn't built up yet. So uh, when you do get your pilot's license, keep going and get your instrument rating too. It will serve you well. And make sure your airplane is instrument rated as well. Because as we found out, even if you got one, you don't got the other, it doesn't do any good. I'm getting ready to make the turn south along Florida. Shows that it's 53 minutes. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. I think we're just going to fly non-stop from Houston to Tampa in a little airplane. That's pretty awesome. We have made our final turn. The next waypoint in the GPS is home. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. A couple of little clouds here and there. No problem. All right. Don't celebrate before you cross the finish line. There's still time to break something. Fighter jet. <laughs> There's our speed for our gear coming down. All right, gear down. Plant City, Lancer, uh, 8261 Echo, final 2-8, Plant City. Plant City traffic, Skycatcher 6029 Lima, 7 miles south, Centaur 45 left downwind, 28, Plant City. A little bit high. Okay. Little, little movement, little movement. Run! Holy mother of pearl, that was really bad. We are definitely going to edit that out. Holy crap. We just went 2,000 miles across the country in this little airplane that some guy built in his garage. Byron, you have built an incredible machine. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to actually learn how to fly it and not break it every time I land. So if you haven't already, you know what to do. Little subscribe, little ding ding. You know the drill. Hey, I think we need to start working on that 310. What do you think? I'm pretty sure that's going to be what we're gonna focus on now because we've got those two airplanes that have been up there for two months and I've been running around all over the all over the world here trying to play with other airplanes. Well, we need to finish what we start. So we're gonna start on that 310 next. Thank you so much. My name is Jimmy. This is Jimmy's world. Welcome to my world. Hey, I almost forgot. I had one of these in the car. I was gonna bring it with me because I knew I'd be cruising at you know higher altitudes, but airline can't bring oxygen on an airplane. It's right in your mouth. What is that? I'm feeling better already. Well, on to the next adventure. <laughs>